Well, I married a hunter. And so I started hunting with him. It's just such a bonding time where you can really talk to your mate and say, man, I really love this and I love doing this with you and I'd rather be here than anywhere else. So then it just went from Tom and I doing this just together to our kids doing it. And now, the blessing of all blessings, we have all these little grandchildren that love the mountains, love being outside, love the hunting, the hiking, the fishing, and they're starting to enjoy it with us. There's nothing, nothing that captures the romance, the camaraderie, the love between each other and what we're doing like hunting with a traditional bow. Growing up, all I ever knew was a recurve. It's just something that we always did as a family from the time we were little kids and up. You know, I, I love the artistry that goes into building the bows. I mean, they're truly functional works of art. I love the skill that you're learning. And it's a skill that dates back to the earliest civilizations. One of mankind's earliest skills, one that's always been with us. It's definitely something that gets in your blood. It can become a lifestyle. It's just an awesome sport. Traditional archery in general gives us a chance to connect with our weapon and connect to more of the hunt. And that's one of the beauties of wooden arrows, is it just furthers that connection. So when I was a kid, it's not like you could walk into any old archery shop and find a set of arrows, let alone wooden arrows, for a traditional bow. It does add to a level of enjoyment and it gives you something else to do in the sport when you're not shooting, when you're not hunting. It gives me a chance to inundate myself even more in the sport that I really love. You can hang it on the wall if you wanted to. It's fun to look at, but then you can take it off the wall and go shoot it. You're carrying a stick around. It's a very primitive weapon, but it's so functional. It can kill an animal so quickly, so quietly, and cleanly. with a traditional bow, you really have to be proficient to hit that spot and um, you know you don't want to wound the animal because you want to make it as ethical as possible. You know if you're not quite confident or quite sure about whether or not you can make that shot then you don't you don't do it. You don't you don't shoot. We have a very large family and going to the grocery store can be so depressing <laughs> because you're spending so much money to feed your family. Thank goodness we don't have to spend a lot of money on meat because we have these freezers full of, of meat and it, it is, it's a huge savings. Um, just financially it's been a real blessing. Instead of grass-fed beef, we're giving them grass-fed elk. You know, I worked uh, kind of a dead-end job I wasn't interested in, really, and uh, I went to take a hunting vacation. My employer said, oh, you, we can't let you go. We need you here. And I said, oh, my goodness, it's how do you just expect me not to go? And so I said, well, I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to quit. You know, I wanted to do something I enjoyed. So I talked to my dad and he said, why don't you go to taxidermy school? So that's where it all started. I had some people walk in here and say, oh, why would they mount that? Well, it's a memory to somebody. It, it means something. It's a kid's first buck or a dad's last buck. I mean, you just never know what it's gonna be, but why people want to preserve that memory, so. As I was a kid growing up, my dad used this sport as a tool to, um, for us to spend time together. 
as an adult with kids of my own, I look for ways to spend time with them and ways to help them enjoy spending time with me. And so, but when I had a family, I got my own arrow making stuff so that I could enjoy this with my sons. And hopefully, maybe someday, they do it with their sons. I look back on the relationship that I had with my dad, and I want that same stuff with my kids. That's, that's the ultimate dream, I think, that most dads have. It's definitely one that I have. So to hunt with a traditional bow does take another level of dedication to keep your skills honed. And we owe that to ourselves and to those animals we're hunting. None of us want to wound an animal. I, you know, I'd much rather miss an animal than wound one. I don't want to be quite good enough to wound them. <laughs> I'd rather be worse and miss them in, in a lot of ways. But we owe it to the animals to spend the time to practice and develop our skill so that we can make a clean harvest. To make that beautiful shot on the surface that everybody sees, there's a lot of stuff going on underneath that you need to have a process that you can repeat. So when we teach archery, we teach folks to put their talent into a repeatable process. And then it just gets to be a feel thing, because archery is a feel sport. To place that thumb pad on the bow and feel that string in your fingers. And as you're raising the bow, you're coiling your body and then a draw into an anchor point and the elbow comes behind the arrow. And then you're looking at your target and then you increase the tension through the break of the shot and your arms break away. And you see the arc of that arrow into the spot you want to hit. So much effort goes in and so much teamwork from everybody. Without that, I mean, it's, it wouldn't be the same if just one guy did it all. It wouldn't mean the same. And it's this type of community effort that keeps hunters and friends tied together in a bond that we all share that is important to keep the interest of hunting alive. The simplicity is absolutely awesome. Can't be in a hurry. Don't worry about it. You don't have to kill that animal. What are you there for? <laughs> There's no other feeling in the world like stalking through the woods with this beautiful handmade bow in your hand. You can look down on it and, and feel the craftsmanship in that thing. You can feel it. The skill of the boyer's hands went into that bow. It shaped that bow for you. When I have success in the field, my daughter or my son probably made the arm guard I'm wearing. My good friend Buddy made that bow. Those strings were made by one of my loved ones. I mean, the arrows were made by my buddy Tracy. <laughs> you kind of like all in this passion together. Um, we're all sharing the romance of this, this thing that we can put our hands on uh, and create for ourselves. And uh, it's just another connection between all of us. First, the mornings are so still and so quiet, and as the sun comes up, the skies just turn these bright colors, and and then the birds start chirping, and the whole world around you comes alive. When you're up in the mountains, in some of these places that no one else will ever go, I don't know. There's just something about it, something so peaceful, and I guess it hits you kind of in a spiritual way. You're just like, wow. This world is amazing. It's beautiful. And you know, you you don't see that when you're in the city, but you get up in those mountains and the colors and just the sounds, all of it is just it's just all it's awestruck. This year I gotta shoot a moose. And I can tell you that I can remember every microsecond of that shot. So I took a couple deep breaths, 
got my mind in a cognitive state, and I ran my shot like I do when I practice. But when the, the moment of truth came, I was completely in that moment in, in my shot, and I can remember everything about that shot. I was also fortunate enough to get a moose on this hunt. And my favorite memory was waiting for the grandkids to come up and see the moose. Now they're gonna to get to see this beautiful creature on the ground, and they're gonna be able to help us actually dress it, skin it, get the meat, and they're gonna be able to put all of this together from just standing in grandma's kitchen, watching the guys cut all this meat, to seeing where it really comes from. And so for me, that's like almost coming around full circle, watching these kids from when I started learning with it, with Tom teaching me, us teaching our kids, and now we are being blessed with being able to teach our grandkids. And everybody just enjoys it so much. And then the kids recognize they're getting good, healthy food for their bodies. I mean, the kill, there's always a sad time for me there, because you did take a life. That's kind of a cliche thing, you know what I mean? The kill and being sad. People talk about that a lot, but it is a reality. It's a beautiful creature that God's given us. And death is a very sad thing. And I feel very sad grateful for the meat, but it's hard to watch an animal die. Hunting with my brother, that was just just something that we always did together. Um, he's obviously my number one hunting partner. We grew up doing it together. We were both taught by our dad together, and so when we're hunting together, it's uh, you just don't even have to think about it. And it's a huge deal, something we take very seriously, and that I take a lot of satisfaction in. I hope that I'm doing this when I'm an old man. I hope I'm still straightening my own wooden arrows and matching them to my own bows. Because I want to find ways to, to stay active and stay involved in archery all the time. No matter, that's all I think about. It's all I want to do is shoot my bow, be in the woods, be doing something that's related to this sport. Look at some of those old bows that you see at the bow shop. I wonder where they've been, the hunts they've seen, the trips they've been on. Man, if they could tell stories. This tree has lived two lives. It lived, and now it's gonna live again in this bow. And hopefully, it'll live for a long, long time as a bow. <laughs> That's just the shit I think of when I'm in here working. <laughs> Me and my little hermit shop. I just love it. When I get to mount something for myself, which isn't very often, but when I do, I remember who I'm with, the hunt, whether it was my girlfriend or my daughter or my, my father. You know, a memory, we can, we can think it in our head all day long, but to see it on the wall or to see it in a life-size mount just captures everything that we can't remember. It's been a family tradition now for over 35 years. And the bond between all of us grows deeper with every passing year. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Thank you, Tommy. How much more blessed can a woman be? Thank you.